Have you ever wondered what's inside a cell? No, not a prison cell, the cell that is the basic unit of life. Welcome to our journey into the microscopic world, where we'll be delving into the fascinating universe of cells. Now don't be fooled by the size of these tiny units, they might be microscopic but they're mighty nonetheless. They're the building blocks of life, the foundation upon which every living thing from the smallest bacteria to the largest blue whale, and yes, even us humans are built. Imagine a bustling city teeming with activity. Now shrink that down a few million times and you've got a cell. Each cell is like a microcosm, a tiny universe unto itself, brimming with complex structures and intricate processes that keep life ticking along. In this journey we're going to get up close and personal with these microscopic marvels. We'll delve into the heart of the cell, exploring its many parts, each with its own unique function. From the nucleus that holds the blueprints of life, to the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. We'll navigate through the maze-like endoplasmic reticulum and discover the tiny factories that are ribosomes. And that's just the start. We'll also be comparing the structure and function of plant and animal cells. Ever wonder why you can't photosynthesize sunlight like plants do, or why plants don't move around like animals? Well, the answers lie in the unique structures found in their cells, and of course we'll be sprinkling in some humor along the way, because who says science has to be serious all the time? Whether you're a seasoned biologist or just someone curious about the world around you, there's something for everyone. So, are you ready to take a plunge into the world of cells? It's going to be a microscopic adventure like no other. A journey that will take us to the very core of life itself. So buckle up as we embark on an exciting journey into the microscopic world of cells. Did you know that all living organisms are composed of cells? That's right, even you. Now let's delve into the crux of cell theory. Picture it as a three-part saga, each part as crucial as the others. The first part tells us that all living things, from the tiniest bacteria to the largest blue whale, are made up of cells. Whether you're looking at a blade of grass or your own hand, cells are the building blocks of life. Moving on to the second part of our saga, it tells us that cells aren't just random blobs, they are in fact, the basic units of structure and function in living things. This means that each cell has a specific job to do. It's like a tiny factory with different parts working together to keep the organism alive and well, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and organ systems make up organisms. It's a beautiful cascade. Finally, the last part of our saga explains that new cells are produced from existing cells. This is how life perpetuates. When a cell divides it creates two new cells, which then grow and divide themselves and so on. This process is known as cell division, and it's happening right now in your body millions of times over. It's the circle of life at its most microscopic. So there you have it, the cell theory in a nutshell. It's a simple yet profound concept that forms the foundation of biology. Without cells, there would be no life as we know it. They're the smallest unit of life, yet they hold the biggest secrets. Now that we have the theory down, let's dive deeper into the fascinating world of cells. Imagine a city. Now shrink that city down to a microscopic size, that's your cell. In this microscopic city, the nucleus acts as city hall. It's the control center, holding the majority of the cell's genetic material, or the city's ordinances if you will. This material or DNA dictates everything that happens within the cell, just like ordinances guide a city's operations. Now every city needs protection, and that's where the cell membrane or city walls come in. This flexible barrier controls who gets in and who gets out, kind of like the bouncers at your favorite concert venue. Then we have the cell wall. Think of it as the city's outer fortifications, providing an extra layer of protection. However, not all cells have this. It's found only in plant cells and some bacteria, kind of like how not all cities have a medieval wall around them. On to the power plants of our cell city, the mitochondria. These structures are responsible for producing the energy needed for the cell to function, much like how a city's power plant keeps the lights on. Next up, the chloroplasts. These are the solar power plants, but again, not all cells have these. Only plant cells do. They use sunlight to create energy in a process known as photosynthesis. It's like your city going green and using renewable energy. Let's not forget the vacuoles, the city's storage units. They store various materials needed by the cell, from water to waste products. It's sort of like a city's waste management system holding onto things until they're needed or ready to be disposed of. And finally, the cytoplasm. This is where all the action happens. It's like the cityscape filled with buildings, roads, parks, and more. The cytoplasm is the space where all the cell's activities take place, where the other organelles reside and do their jobs. Now these are just the basics. 
Each of these components has a complex and vital role in the life of a cell, just like the various parts of a city all contribute to its function and atmosphere. They work together, each part relying on the others to keep things running smoothly. And remember, while all cells share these common features, there are also many differences. Just like cities around the world, each one has its own unique character and function. A muscle cell is not the same as a nerve cell, just like New York is not the same as Tokyo. But whether it's a bustling metropolis or a microscopic cell, it's all about working together to create something amazing. Just like a city, a cell is a bustling hub of activity. Each component has its own role to play. Cells are like snowflakes, no two are the same. Well, not exactly, but there are differences between animal and plant cells. Now let's dive into the unique world of plant and animal cells. While they share a lot of common ground, there are few key differences that set them apart. Animal cells, for instance, are like the social butterflies of the cellular world. They love to mingle and change their shape to interact with their environment. They're flexible, able to move freely, and this is mainly because they don't have a rigid cell wall like plant cells do. Speaking of which, plant cells are a bit more like the introverts at a party. They're typically more rigid and structured, thanks to an extra layer called the cell wall. This cell wall, made of cellulose, gives them a fixed shape and provides extra protection and support. It's like the plant cell's very own suit of armor, keeping the cell safe and sound. But that's not the only thing that distinguishes plant cells. They also have chloroplasts, the little green factories that let plants photosynthesize. Through photosynthesis, plants convert sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into food and oxygen. It's like they've got a built-in kitchen, whipping up meals from the simplest of ingredients. In contrast, animal cells don't have chloroplasts. They rely on food intake for their energy needs, breaking down food in their mitochondria to produce energy. It's a bit like ordering takeout instead of cooking at home. Finally, plant cells have a large central vacuole, a storage unit for water, nutrients, and waste products. Animal cells also have vacuoles, but they are smaller and more numerous. Despite these differences, both animal and plant cells have a lot in common. They both have a nucleus, which acts as the control center, directing all cell activities. They both also have a cell membrane, mitochondria, and cytoplasm, among others. So, while they have their differences, both plant and animal cells are equally fascinating. Now that we know what makes up a cell, let's follow the journey of a cell. Have you ever wondered what happens inside a cell? The life of a cell isn't as simple as just floating around. It's a constant cycle of birth, growth, and division. So let's embark on this microscopic journey. The journey of a cell starts with its formation. When a parent cell divides, two new daughter cells are formed. This process is called cell division, and it's like the cell's birth. Each new cell gets a complete set of genetic instructions from the parent cell, like a microscopic inheritance. This information is stored in the nucleus, the cell's control center. After its birth, the cell starts to grow and carry out its functions. And as it carries out its functions, it also prepares for division. This is like the cell's retirement plan. The cell duplicates its DNA stored in the nucleus and prepares to split into two new cells. And finally, the big event. Cell division. The cell splits into two new cells, each with their own complete set of genetic instructions. This is like the passing of the torch from one generation to the next. And then, the cycle begins again. The new cells grow, carry out their functions, prepare for division, and eventually divide into more cells. This process of cell division allows for growth and repair in multicellular organisms. It's like the cell's contribution to the larger life cycle of the organism. So, you see the life of a cell is a journey full of growth, work, and division. It's a constant cycle that ensures the survival and growth of the organism. And thus, the life cycle of a cell goes on, contributing to the larger life cycle of the organism. So, we've journeyed through the world of a cell, a world that exists within each and every living organism. It's been a microscopic adventure, hasn't it? Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned. We began by understanding the cell theory, which is the cornerstone of biology. We learned that all living organisms are composed of cells, that the cell is the fundamental unit of life, and that all cells come from pre-existing cells. It's kind of like the family tree of life, if you think about it. Then, we dove into the heart of these tiny powerhouses to identify their components. We discovered the nucleus, the brain of the cell, which holds our genetic information. We learned about the cell membrane and cell wall, the bouncers of the cell, deciding who gets in and who doesn't. Then there's the mitochondria, the cell's powerhouse, and the chloroplasts, the cell's personal solar panels in plant cells. 
And let's not forget the vacuole, the cell's storage unit, and the cytoplasm, the jelly-like substance where all the action happens. We also compared animal and plant cells and found that while they have a lot in common, they also have key differences. Plant cells, for instance, have a rigid cell wall and chloroplasts for photosynthesis, while animal cells do not. But both are equally fascinating and vital for life as we know it. It's incredible to think about how these tiny structures are working tirelessly, every second of every day, to keep us alive and functioning. They're like the unsung heroes of life, aren't they? As we wrap up this journey I hope you're walking away with a newfound appreciation for these cellular marvels. And not just for the cells in your own body, but for the cells in every living organism around you. They are the building blocks of life, the miniature factories that keep the world turning. Remember every living thing begins with a single cell. So next time you look in the mirror, remember the billions of cells working together to make you, you.